I'm so sorry, brother. I'm so sorry that you are in this. This is not the the card that you wanted to play, but it's the card you were dealt. What's up, everybody? Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for watching and listening wherever you're coming from. What I do here is I answer your questions. Super easy, super casual. You email me, grangersmithpodcast at gmail.com. We walk through them just like we're on a road trip together. I'm going to answer like a friend, and I have no notes, no quotes, nothing prepared in front of me. In fact, I haven't even read any of these questions ready to go here at all totally random. I have no idea what I'm getting into. They're straight from you guys. And this is episode 175. Let's get started here. First question. No subject line. It says, Hey Granger, my name is Noah. I have a question about my family. My parents got divorced when I was about five years old. I'm now 17. And for the past three years, my father has not spoken to me. I haven't seen him in a year. All of this because my stepmom caused a series of events that created a disaster for our family, a family all of us thought could never be broken. My father has turned his back on me and my brother and his grandma who raised him and our cousins. The family and the farm is in shambles. Lately, I really miss my father. I guess what I'm asking is, what do you think I should do? Wow. Yeah, Noah, thank you for for kicking off the podcast with a, a a very deep question. And I'm so sorry, brother. I'm so sorry that you are in this. This is not the, the card that you wanted to play, but it's the card you were dealt, right? And that's, that's what we could all say about ourselves. We, we don't always enjoy what we're doing or, or, or say that this is where we thought we would be, or this is what we would choose to be. As far from that, life is is so much more just about the hand that we're dealt. How do we play it? How do we play the hand that we're dealt without looking around and saying, man, what that family over there across the street, they're doing pretty good. Why do I get this hand? Instead of asking why, change it to what. What am I going to do with this? What am I going to do with the hand I'm dealt? How am I going to play this? Instead of why. You can't, you can't respond to why. You can't, there's no action connected with why. There's action connected with what. What next? What am I going to do now? Okay? And that's exactly what you're asking. Okay? Great. You said, what do you think I should do? There's no right or wrong answer. Let's walk through it though. Okay, Noah... Um, let me recap. Dad's been gone two thirds of your life. We see this stepmom problem. This is not necessarily a stepmother problem. It's a step parent problem because it could be a stepdad as well. But we see the step parent problem so many times on the microcosm of what the Granger Smith podcast is and 175 episodes and God knows how many questions. Man, we have seen the step parent create havoc. And I don't necessarily blame that person. I, I, this is this is on your dad. This is on your dad. He's in la la land. And you, you don't want to tell a 17 year old that his dad is in la la land. but th- but that's what's happening. Um, in, in in one more year, you're eligible for the draft. <laughs> if there was a draft. And you should know um, your dad has gone cuckoo, right? He's got love eyes on and and he's, he is, he's too attached to this woman, this stepmother. He's so attached to her that he can't see what's really going on and he can't see the damage that it's doing. And, and dare I say, he is, He is frightened of her in a way. He has a fear of her in a way that's deeper than his fear of losing his family. And that is a sad place to be. So what do you do? You love him. You love him. 
You forgive him. And that's not the answer you probably wanted or maybe did, maybe not what you expected. Maybe after all this buildup, you're thinking, yeah, dad's a jerk. What do I do, Granger? Tell me what I, what do I do? Do I, do I figure out some kind of legal way to win this battle? Brother, the, the way to win this battle is by loving him. You send him a letter. You say, dad, I miss you, man. The farm's in shambles. And the family's hurting. Your grandma's hurting. None of us blame you. It's just the way it is right now. More than anything, we just miss you. And I love you, Dad. I really wish I could see you. And miss, I wish maybe we can jump on the phone sometime. I, just want, I want you to know, Dad, that, that I forgive you. And I hope you forgive me for anything I've done. And I would like to meet up sometime and grab a burger, talk about some stuff whenever you're ready. The door's open, Dad. Noah, if you could do that, man, that that takes a man to do that. It takes a mature man to do that. Not that you aren't at 17, not that you're not there yet. Maybe you are. Sounds like you maybe you're growing up quick, but if you could do that, you'll be a man, my son. You'll be a man. That's how a man would deal with this. Not with his fist, not with his attitude, not by breaking things and being angry. That's weak. A weak man would do that. A weak man would turn his back on a a cowardly father by acting cowardly back to him and becoming that, continuing the cycle in his life. That's not you, Noah. That's not why you emailed this podcast. That's not why a 17-year-old guy like you listens to this podcast. I got a feeling about you. You're breaking that generational curse. It stops with you. Partly, partly in the fact that when you when you find a girl and you get married to this girl, you're going to make a commitment to her and that family, and you're not going anywhere. And you're going to tell your wife that. And you're going to tell your kids that. That you're going to say, you know, I learned I learned some stuff when I was growing up about a broken family, a broken home. I will not do that to you guys. You'll look them in the eye in, in, at the dinner table. You'll say, I will not leave you guys. I'm your dad. The generational curse stops with me. That's you, Noah. I'm speaking this into you, man. I'm speaking some identity into you as you move forward and you handle this situation with grace, love, and forgiveness. And you tell your great-grandma, he said, Grandma, Dad, Dad's cuckoo right now, but that's not who he is. You know him better than that. He's in la-la land, but we're hoping that he comes back and we forgive him, Grandma. I know it's tough, but we still love him, don't we, Grandma? You spread that message around. You don't let that deceit just find its way in and start breaking this this family apart any further because people get together and gossip and go, you know about step the stepmom? You know what she said? You know what she did in this email? Or so-and-so saw her at the bank and the line at the teller's office. You know what she did? She just ignored him. And, he, and you know what else? You know what we heard a rumor about her, about her ex-husband, the electrician down there? You know, this stuff just spreads like cancer. You're not going to be a part of it, Noah. You're not a part of it. I appreciate you emailing, brother. I hope you could take this with you. I hope you could take it with you. Next question, moving on here. Septic line says, girl. Question says, how can you tell if the girl you're dating is the right one? Mm. Question comes from Bentley. Bentley, common question we get on this podcast And uh, I understand, I hear you, I hear you loud and clear. How can you tell if the girl you're dating is the right one? Yeah, because your hands are sweaty and your knees are weak. You can't eat and you can't sleep. Alan Jackson had a song back in the, I guess the 90s called Sounds Like Love's Got a Hold on You. You just know it, brother. You know it. You go, man, this girl, this girl does something to me. I feel sick. I feel physically ill 
around this girl. She turns me every way but loose, is what Alan Jackson said. That's how you know. You don't have to ask. All right, next question. Subject line says, fate. Hey, Granger, my name is Christine. I'm 31, live in a small town on the Vermont border. I was in a military relationship for the better part of three years. We were on and off several times during deployments, COVID and relocations. We also talked about getting married, having kids and living happily ever after. We haven't spoken in almost two years now, but I think about him every day and I even dream about him. Everyone has told me that I need to move on and allow another man into my life. I'm worried that I'll never find someone quite like him. But my biological clock is ticking. I want nothing more than to raise a family. I'm trying to rely on God's plan, but I frequently get discouraged. Do you believe anything? Excuse me. You said, you didn't say that. You said, do you believe everything happens for a reason? Is fate real? And where does God's plan fit in? Thank you for everything you do. God bless, Christine. Ah, oh, Christine, thank you for the email. Um, I'm going to recap for my own brain. You're 31, and you were in a military relationship for the better part of three years, on and off. So this was okay. You, you said we even talked about getting married, having kids. So that didn't that didn't happen. This is the boyfriend. This is an ex boyfriend that you still think about. Got it. Okay, let's start backwards. I'm going to start at the back half of this first. I'm going to deal with what I think is more important than the ex-boyfriend right now. And that is the question where you say, do you believe everything happens for a reason? One, is fate real? Two, and three, where does God's plan fit in? I want to challenge you, Christine, on that last question. Where does God's plan fit in? And I would have you flip everything and say, God's plan happens no matter what. Where does my life fit into that? Where does fate fit into that? Where does everything happening fit into that? Right? So God's purpose, God's plan happens because he's God and he's sovereign. And that's what the Bible tells us, that his plan will stand always. And it's always good. He even turns evil for good. He uses bad for good in a way that we can't possibly understand, but we can understand it through our own, you know, our own drama that we have in our life, that we, we write a book or we, ha we watch a movie. And I've talked about this before. You, you have a, the antagonist in the movie. You take him out. You take the bad out of the movie. It's no longer a good movie, Right? You can't understand light at all unless you see the dark, right? Unless you have the dark contrasting it. So we can kind of see maybe in our finite brains why he would allow certain things to happen. But, but what we do know is that he has a plan and it happens that way. So the real question is that you're trying to ask, I hope, or at least I'm challenging you is, where do we fit into that? Where does my little tiny life fit into that plan? Okay. I can't answer that for you. <laughs> I could shoot you in the right direction. I can't answer that. But, I, but I'm, I, if I can reframe your thinking to, to be that, then I think it'll really help you to better understand the path that you're on. Okay. So let, let's go now with that idea, with a new reframed question. Now let's talk about the ex-boyfriend, okay? It's easy to look back and see that hindsight is twenty twenty. That's just a thing. We know this. You say we are on and off several times during, diploma, during, during deployments, COVID, and relocations. You didn't make it. There's a lot of stuff going on, right? Now that could be a positive thing for you because you it was a very unstable time in both of y'all's lives and now maybe you're kind of stable now and so my question to you would be this you ever think about writing him an email 
I'm sure you still have his email. Do you ever think about writing him an email and saying this to him? Your words, okay? Okay, Christine, your words. Hey, I know that we are on and off several times. Deployments, COVID, relocations. I know that we talked about even getting married, having kids, living happily ever after. I know that we haven't spoken in almost two years, and this is awkward to say, but I think about you every day. I even dream about you. Everyone has told me I need to move on and allow another man into my life, but I'm just worried that I'll never find someone quite like you. I didn't say that. That's not my words. That was your email, Christine. You just said it to me. You asked me that about him. So what if you wrote down your own words, as we see this every podcast, and you put it in an email to him? Because guess what happens? There's no more wondering after that. There's no more, I wonder what God's plan is. I wonder where my biological clock is ticking. There's no more wondering. He either doesn't reply or he does, or he says no. But at least you'll know. You could move on like your friends say because he's going to ghost you or he's going to say, hey, I'm married now. I'm engaged now. Or he's going to say, I feel the same way. Where could we meet? Either way, you will know. Okay? Let's jump into something else here. This is looks like a completely different subject. Subject line here says, is astrology a sin? Hey, Granger, I'm Rebecca, reaching out from Southern Illinois. I've been curious about a topic that's been eating at me for a while now. Is astrology a sin? God not only created the stars, but he arranged them in star groupings that could be used for signs and for seasons. Many say astrology is a sin, but I've also heard the gospel in the st- is in the stars. What are your thoughts on God and astrology? Is it a sin? Okay, Rebecca, thanks for the for the email. Um, you, this is this is where I wish we were in a in a conversation together around a campfire because you say many say astrology is a sin, but I've also heard the gospel is in the stars. <clears throat> I, I don't know what that means. You say the gospel is in the stars. That's that's not true. That that's not true at all. The gospel's not in the stars. Okay. The gospel is the good news about God coming to earth as Jesus. Fully man, fully God, taking on the sins of his people, redeeming his people. It's the redemption story of Israel. And he is the climax of that story when he is killed on the cross, resurrected in three days. And he says that anyone who repents and turns to him will have everlasting life. During the time on the cross, he atoned for the sin. He paid for the price of the sins of his people in full. That is the gospel. That is the good news. There are gospels that... We have four copies of from four different apostles. We have those as gospels. And then there's also the gospel that all of the gospels proclaim. It's the proclamation of good news is gospel. And that is not in the stars. Okay. Now, did he create the stars and arrange them and in? Name them? Yes, the Bible says that he knows all the stars. He made all the stars. He named all the stars. Did he arrange them for signs and seasons in a way that he arranged the trees for signs and seasons? We could look at a a, a red oak tree and, and know when the buds are coming, that, that spring is coming. In fact, a mesquite tree in Texas, when we know the mesquite tree buds, my grandpa used to say this, when the mesquite tree starts budding, you know you could put out your garden because a mesquite tree will only bud after the last frost. 
that becomes a sign for us on earth as we take dominion of this earth. We could look to different things as a sign of earthly things, not heavenly things. So we could look at a tree and know that that the last frost is over and we could put out a garden, but we can't look at a tree and say, God is coming in three months because of the tree is giving me the sign. The same way, you can't look at the stars and see any kind of heavenly messages at all. That would be a terrible heresy, a terrible heresy. But you could look at the stars all day and go, look, look at how they make shapes and they make, they make creatures and look at that one looks like an alligator. Wow, that one, that one is moving. It's a shooting star. Look how beautiful they are. Look how small we are. Look how depth, the, the great depth of the galaxy is. You could say all that. But as soon as you start saying they're arranged in signs and messages for me from God, it's it very dangerous. Let's take a break. Be right back. Thanks for listening to the podcast. You know, a great way to get a hold of me or to send me a message or to have me send you a message is at Cameo. Cameo.com slash Granger Smith. Or you can download the Cameo app and search for me, Granger Smith. It's a super easy format. And I've done Cameo for about three and a half years now. And it's just part of my daily life. I love doing it and I love being able to communicate. What it is is you send me a message and I record you back a video message of whatever you want me to say. Could be happy birthday, happy anniversary, words of encouragement, uh, happy engagement, announcing babies. I've done pretty much everything. Right now is a good time for Valentine's Day. You, 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 you need that last minute gift. You need me to say something last minute for your Valentine. I got you covered. Just go to cameo.com slash Granger Smith. Send me your request for whoever you want me to send it to. Also, this is a big week for Yee Yee Apparel coming up this Friday, the 17th, our all new 2023 winter launch. So excited about this. We have so many really cool items. You could find out more at yeeyee.com. Make sure you get there about 10 a.m. Central because you wait too long, your favorite sizes will start being sold out. You don't want that to happen. So go to yeeyee.com right now to get your preview. You could also follow Yee Yee Apparel on Instagram or follow me on Instagram at Granger Smith. Back to the podcast. All right, back to the podcast. If you have a question for me, email grangersmithpodcast at gmail.com. Could be about any subject. My only thing is, please don't send the same one twice because that gets lost or trashed. And don't send me one that's much longer than like a phone length because then it makes it difficult to read that question on the podcast. Okay, let's get back into this subject line. This one says, girlfriends past. Granger, my name is Kyle. I'm 22. I'm madly in, uh, in love with my girlfriend of six months, and she feels the same about me. She's amazing in every way, and we've already talked about marriage. I love everything about her other than her past. She's had multiple previous boyfriends before me, and I just cannot seem to get the thought out of my head that she's been with them and has had sex with guys other than me. I just cannot get the mental images out of my head. I just don't know if it's jealousy or what it is, but I don't know how to go through this. What are your thoughts? Thanks. No, I'm sorry. That last sentence you said, but I know I'm not the only one going through this. What are your thoughts? Thanks. Okay. Kyle, appreciate you, bro. Thank you for emailing. 22 years old, um, madly in love, girlfriend, six months. She feels the same. Amazing every way. Not quite, right? And you've talked about marriage. Cool. Yeah, I hear you. I'm hearing you here. And this is what we're going to talk about, Kyle. So me and you, road tripping, right? This is a great road trip question. Driving down the highway, me and you. And you're like, man, Granger, I got to... I'm like, hey, how's the girl, right? How's the girl? And you go, man, it's great. Every, everything's great. And, you know, I really love, madly in love with her. And I'm like, but 
But man, I can't, I can't get over her past boyfriends. I always think about it. <coughs> it. Makes me sneeze. I just think about this. Kyle makes me sneeze. Excuse me. This is something that you're going to have to look at who she is now. This is what this is what's going to play into this uh, this this answer. So much of what I need you to do now is look at who she is now today. Who is she today, Kyle? That's what I tell you in the cab of the truck. You're not going to look at her and, and who she was with past boyfriends. I know that that's difficult to do, but this is an exercise you're going to have to force yourself in because trust, trust me, no one wants to look at your past either. Kyle, what it, you know about her past and you know about these ex-boyfriends because she's opened up and told you. But there's stuff she doesn't know about you. What has happened in your past? What are things that have, that have happened that no one knows about? And what if everything you've done in your life was put on a tape? That sounds so old tape. Digital, it was put, put on a digital file. <laughs> and we all got to watch it. Kyle, we get to see your whole life on one click. How would you feel? Is there stuff you're ashamed of? Is there stuff that you wish that no one could see? Hmm. I would say yes. It would be very strange if you said no because you're a human. I'm not blaming you. I'm saying me, you, everyone. There's stuff that we just don't want people to know in our past. But that's not who we are. The past doesn't define us. It refines us. I put that in a song. The past does not define us. It refines us. It makes us better now that we've learned from it, hopefully. So who is this girlfriend today? Who is she today? Has she learned? Does she have a repentant heart? Is she not like that anymore? Kyle, is she having sex with you, bro? Is she? Hmm. That's what I'd ask you in the cab of the truck. You having sex with this girl now? Because you haven't married her yet. And you just might be another one of these ex-boyfriends in line that somebody else has got to worry about. You might be that guy. Are you that guy? Oh, no, man. No, Granger, I love, I'm madly in love with her. She feels the same. She's amazing. We've, we've even talked about marriage. Ah, is that what the last guy said? Be careful, man. Be careful. This is, this is a tricky situation. I hope... I hope that you're looking at this from a perspective of, your, of, of you saying, we're starting a, a new chapter. We're laying, we're laying some new ground here and um, I'm, I'm respecting her in a way that the past boyfriends haven't. Mm. Man, what if he said that? I hope that's true. And what if she is, she has a repentant heart and she's like, I, I, I regret my past and I'm not that person anymore. I'm a new person now. What if she's saying that? Mm. This changes everything. If that's the case, that's what you're going to be looking at, who she is today. Not this past girl, okay? You're not going to, not going to worry about the past unless she still is that person. And if she is, then you don't need to be with her. Just make sure you're not the new ex-boyfriend. That sneeze I had in that last question proves that we do not cut this podcast. <laughs> we roll with it. I don't have notes. I don't not prepared. We roll with it. Septic line this next one says, parachute for children. Granger, I was listening to this week's podcast, 10, 24, 22. That's old. Where you gave your analogy on the plane is going down. We run out of fuel. You wouldn't want to have a parachute. For adults and other individuals, wait, wait, what? what? What did I say? Sometimes I don't know what I said. You gave the analogy on the plane is going down out of fuel, wouldn't want to have a parachute. You wouldn't want to have a parachute. I don't know what, that's exactly what you typed and I'm not sure what that means. For adults and other individuals, 
they know that they could build that relationship with God to get that parachute. And it merely becomes a choice for those individuals. My wife and I have a three-year-old daughter and a one-year-old son. My question is, how do children that young, oh, I see where this is going, commit their life to Christ to get that parachute? I see what you're talking about. As I imagine, there is no get-out-of-jail-free card for children. Thanks for continuing to share your love in Christ and working to move others in his direction on all your platforms. Yee, yee, Tyler. Tyler, thanks for the email, bro. Sorry, I was playing catch up with trying to understand what I told you in the past. I'm not who I was in the past, Tyler. <laughs> Judge me from the present. Just kidding. Okay, um, your question is, how do, you, how do you prepare children to go to heaven? That's your question. You have a three-year-old daughter and a one-year-old son. Yeah. You pray for them. You pray over them. You pray under them. You pray, you pray around them. You pray at dinner. You pray in front of them. You let them catch you on your knees. You let them catch you walking out of their, the, their little room. And it's 6.45 in the morning and, and they're coming out. Your three-year-old daughter is just waking up, getting ready to get, eat her Cheerios. And she sees daddy in there reading his Bible studying like his life depends on it and then she remembers that when she's four and five and six and seven and eight and you pour into her and you love her and you respect her and you love her mama and you respect her mama and she sees who you are in your heart and she sees where your allegiance lies and what you care about and what you do and who you worship and how you lead the household, and you pray for her every night. You say, God, take this child. Love this little girl. Bring her into your kingdom. Have mercy on us. Bless this child. Every single night, every single morning, every single meal, and when you think about it in the middle of the day, that's what you do, brother. She can't understand anything at three, but that's what you pour over her. That's all you could do. All right. Random, random choice email. Subject line says, tell me how. Hey, Granger. My name is Luke. I'm from Michigan. I'm 18. I have always been single. Even though I know with everything in me that God does not want me to have a girlfriend, I still find myself wanting one. I hear you say all the time how to learn to be content and single. Can you give me some clarity on how to get to that point? Love the podcast. Helps so much. Luke, appreciate you, brother. Thank you for emailing. I love the state of Michigan. Good to hear from you, man. Um, I'm going to beat you up real good, Luke. That's how much I love you, buddy. What are you talking about? God does it. You, everything in you says God doesn't want you to have a girlfriend. Where do you read that? Maybe that goes back to that, that email about the stars that God gave you. A, he wrote it in the stars. He said, Luke, you're not going to have a girlfriend. And he wrote it in Latin. I'm just kidding. Um, you don't know that. You don't know with everything in you that he doesn't want you to have a girlfriend. You don't know that. You don't know that. Don't say that. Take that out of your email, Okay. Second part I'm going to beat you up on. What am I, what, what's the next part? You hear me say all the time to be content and single. Yes, I do. And then you say, give me some clarity on how to get to that point. Hey, no beating up on that one. That's, that's it. Um, I, love, I love to try to be as practical as I can. If I'm not practical, you guys call me out because I don't, want to, I don't ever want to say things that goes over people's head. And they're like, I don't even know what this dude's talking about. I don't know what Granger, he's just blabbering on about something. I don't know what it is. I want to be practical and I, I want to be, like you said, I want to have clarity on the points. I don't, I don't like to hear anything that is vague, especially when it comes to something serious like this. Like you're 18 and you're trying to figure out what to do with your life. That's basically what you're asking. And you need some clarity because you feel an anxiety to have a girlfriend. So let's dig in on that a little bit, okay? That you have a feeling that you want a girlfriend. 
man, I mean, that's a natural feeling for an 18-year-old boy. And I'm not going to blame you for that. Luke, I don't, I'm not going to say that that's a bad, wrong, sinful, terrible feeling. I'm not saying that. If you've, if you've heard me say something like that, I, be, I, I want to say gently, I feel like you've misunderstood me when it comes to that. Because that's a natural thing for an 18-year-old boy to go, sure would like to have a girlfriend. But there's a difference in that. Sure would, sure would like to have a girlfriend. Sure would like to know what it's like to talk to a girl, to take a girl to Sonic and get a burger and a Coke. I wonder what that's like. Take her to a dance. Listen to a favorite song with her. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. But here's, here's where it gets bad. I'm obsessed. I, all I could do is think about this one girl and I just, I need her and I miss her and, and it hurts my heart and I can't sleep at night. It just breaks me up and she doesn't give me the time of day and I, I don't know if she likes me or, or there's somebody out there and I don't know who it is. I'm so lonely. I just can't, I can't stand it. I'm not, I have anxiety and I'm not content. I'm just, I feel this urgency I just don't know what to do. Also, it just consumes me like that, that. That's wrong, okay? That's, that's when I come in and go, no, 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 no. We have to learn to be content and single. But I don't think there's anything wrong with saying, I kind of, this is what you're, you said, I still find myself wanting one. I don't think there's anything wrong with an 18-year-old guy going, I'd like to have a girlfriend. Yeah, I'll be honest with you guys, I'd like to have a girlfriend. Is that an obsession yet? I don't know. Is it a, is it a healthy, you're just 18? That's okay. So after that, now let's get practical. Let's get, to, let's get the clarity on the point, okay? I'm making this up as I go, bro. What are you doing with your mind and your heart? That's what I would ask you. What, what are you doing? Are you the third wheel in a relationship that your buddy and his girlfriend and you're the third wheel? That's not helping things. Are you sitting at home playing video games on the couch and your mom is bringing you peanut butter and jelly sandwiches? That's not helping things. Are you plugged in in a local church and you're 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 serving and you're you're planning on a mission trip to Peru maybe and you you guys are fundraising so that you can you could go to build homes in Peru and you're going to pour into this little community there and you're going to you're going to you're going to help cut chop firewood for Raul that lives there right and and you 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 were micro focusing on this Maybe that's exaggerating, but it's possible. Something like a mission trip, short-term mission trip to Peru as an 18-year-old through your local church after fundraising is not too far-fetched. But what, what if you became focused and passionate about something like this or maybe it's a it's a tech school and you're going to go and you're going to you're going to study welding and you're going to get your certificate and you're going to go out and and you get you're making you're slowly making a path for yourself on what you want to do and and you're growing your passions and you have friends that do it with you and you guys are just now getting into to bird hunting and you're thinking about getting a, a bird dog and so you've been kind of researching puppies these are, these are good, passionate things for an 18-year-old to start directing energy, learning how to be single and content because you start, you start working towards this stuff. You start pouring yourself into passions by design and you don't have room to sit around and go, I sure am lonely. My other friends are dating. I'm looking at Instagram and everyone has somebody but me. That is toxic for your brain. That is, that's where you could start wearing yourself down. So you, you got to get busy being passionate about something. You go, well, Granger, I'm not a passionate person. Get passionate. 
You can't tell me there's nothing in this big world that you can't get behind. Like fundraising for a short-term mission trip in Peru. Sounds like a pretty, I kind of like that. I just made that up and I'm kind of liking it. For you, Luke, you got the name for it, bro. You've got the name for it. Okay. Does that make sense? I'm going to make sure because you said, give me some clarity. I want to make sure I was clear. I want to make sure that, that when I give you practical stuff, I'm talking about you got to do something. You have to do something you're passionate about, hopefully with other guys. You're pulling in other people and you're building a small community, one guy, one friend, two guys. If you don't have any friends, then you seek the passion and then you find people that are going the same direction within that passion. So if, if it's welding, you go, I want to be welding. We already used that ex- example. You want to go into law enforcement. I want to go into law enforcement. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to this, this uh, school, what do they call it? Academy. You're going to go to the police academy. And you're going to find somebody on that same path. And you go, hey, man, my, my name is Luke. And they're like, what's up? I'm, I'm Tom. I'm going to Academy. <laughs> you're like, me too. I, lo- I love it. And then you guys just connect. Like that's, then you have a friend. That's how, that's how this happens. Is that practical enough? Get busy, Luke. Get busy. Okay. So let's recap. It's okay to want to have a girlfriend. It's not okay to obsess about it. And if you start leaking over toward the obsession side of this this equation, get busy. Get busy doing something you're passionate about. That will build your confidence in being content because eventually you look around and you go, huh, I'm okay by myself. I'm content. Love you guys. See you next Monday. Thanks for joining me on the Granger Smith podcast. I appreciate all of you guys. You could help me out by rating this podcast on iTunes. If you're on YouTube, subscribe to this channel, hit that little like button and notifications bell so that you never miss any time I upload a video. If you have a question for me that you would like me to answer, email grangersmithpodcast at gmail.com. Yee yee.